So when visitors come into the museum, I think the main reaction is one of awe and wonderment at this amazing space full upon row upon row of objects from around the world waiting to greet you. It creates this wonderful um, sense of time and place of being almost in a Victorian time machine. But of course it has changed. Right next to us we have 21st century facilities in the form of a library and a cons conservation lab, teaching spaces, offices. It all works together to make sure that we keep moving forward but that we maintain the spirit of this place. Not everyone writes their histories and if we don't have a history written about someone then sometimes the things they've made is the only kind of the document of their lives really so the, the information locked up in these objects is really really important to understanding the world which is kind of what this museum's about what is it rattle yeah rattle sounds like a good one what's it made from antler what kind of animal has an antler like that a deer okay what do you think these silvery buttons are made from they are, yeah, shells. Where do shells come from? The sea. The sea. So whoever made this object, they either live near the sea or they trade with people who live near the sea. Does the fact that they've used deer hooves on it tell you anything about these people? Hunters. Hunters, absolutely. Loads of deer, that kind of thing, yeah. Here's an object made by the same people. What is it? When these people sit down to have dinner in the evening, what do you think is on their plate? Deer and fish, absolutely. You've looked at two objects that are not related to eating and you have told me correctly what is on their plate when they sit down to have their dinner in the evening. There's around 45,000 uh, books and periodicals in the library. One on here on South Italian festivals. Uh, and there's one on bullfighting. There's one on French uh, chocolate makers somewhere that's quite, quite fun and exciting as well. We're trying to conserve what is there already. So important part of what we do is looking at how it was made and trying to preserve that information because that tells you a lot more about how about that object and the story of that object. Bark cloth served as clothes and um, and it was also significant ritually in terms of you know, presenting as gifts. Um, and that's probably why um, the Cook Voyage came back with so much bark cloth was that it was presented regularly as, as gifts to Captain Cook and his crew. Tonight we've opened up the museum for a Day of the Dead themed event. We're expecting in excess of 500 people who will be coming to uh, sample Halloween cocktails, uh, look at all of our death related objects. Uh, we've got ac academic speakers from various universities around the country coming along. Hello. Can you tell me where uh, I should go? You need to go up to the second floor. Second floor. Uh, and you'll see lots of, lots of uh, your kind <laughs> <laughs> out there. <laughs> Sorry to frighten you.